Hello, I'm Christina Raab, Vice President of Strategy for the Crail to Crail Products Innovation Institute. Omar Ahmed joins us today for our next 5 in 10 conversation. Omar is CEO of Artistic Milliners, one of the largest global suppliers of denim products. Headquartered in Pakistan with a fully vertically integrated operation in Karachi, Artistic Milliners has also operations in Los Angeles, California. Omar, thank you for joining us today. It's my pleasure to be here, Christina. Nice to see you and thank you for having me uh, on this forum. Wonderful to have you, Omar. Uh, let us uh, begin uh, with a question. Uh, what do you see as the three most urgent sustainability challenges facing the fashion industry today? The top three, I mean, you know, the greenwashing has, of course, been one of the classic ones. So I'll say that that's still uh, a bit of an issue uh, across the supply chain. So we are, uh, you know, combating that uh, almost every day. Um, and then uh, you have lack of digitization and uh, of course uh, at this point it's just the high cost of raw materials and as well as uh, alternative solutions like uh, regenerative and recycled fibers. Uh, with greenwashing, um, I mean it's been a big problem because a few bad actors can affect the credibility of the entire industry and uh, it's, it's vital to act in good faith, um, take concrete quantifiable actions which which can be traced to source uh, using technologies such as you know today you have uh, a blockchain is really growing in popularity uh, of course it's still at the initial stage um, and uh, but but we see a lot of promise in that uh, in terms of uh, adding transparency and traceability to the system uh, digitization is, is the second thing that this industry has to adapt to the new systems um, you know, the new tools, uh, for instance, uh, we spend a lot of time on measuring and benchmarking our progress. Uh, what we really need is uh, real-time data monitoring and analysis. Uh, and this will help us navigate our sustainability journey, you know, with uh, greater flexibility and, and help the industry become more transparent. And uh, Omar, at uh, Artistic Milliners, you were tackling uh, some of the issues that you have just have explained mm -hmm. through a very active collaboration on the one hand, you know, with the brands uh, that you serve, but also with the suppliers uh, that support your, your business, mm -hmm. really looking at the entire value chain there and the collaboration. And how has a partnership-based approach accelerated your ability to make a positive impact on these critical sustainability challenges in the fashion supply chain? To slow down the, you know, the the impact of uh, global warming, we, we have to act together. Uh, this is this is key. And in today's world, you know, all stakeholders in the value chain are more interdependent than uh, you know any of us would like to admit. And uh, you know, many brand partners and industry players are now realizing the importance of co-creation. The way forward um, is uh, to enable a positive change via collaboration. You know, so. Uh, when two or more big players agree on a common sustainability goal, uh, the commitment is greater, um, as well as impact is more far reaching. It is more likely to become a new industry catalyst. Um, it, it triggers a snowball effect um, uh, in terms of adaptation across the board. And uh, again, a perfect example is what uh, Cradle to Cradle is doing. Um, and you know, when we started working with you, and today to see it grow as it is, especially in the denim industry, is is quite remarkable and uh, it gives us more confidence. It gives uh, our customers more uh, confidence and we're hoping eventually it will also reach, uh, the cradle to cradle message also reach uh, consumers and, and they will see it as that kind of gold standard when it comes to uh, you know, fully transparent uh, and sustainable products. And one of the outcome of your collaboration approach uh, is that Artistic Milliners indeed uh, became the first company to achieve Cradle to Cradle certified at the gold level for denim fabric. And why Cradle to Cradle certified and how is the standard a solution to the challenges you mentioned earlier? Uh, Christina, we, we discussed this so many times and a lot of our customers ask us this question and, and... Uh, what, what differentiates C2C from other solutions is the fact that uh, it, they have a, I mean, you have a very holistic uh, approach uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, considering all aspects of, of the business. You know, it, can, it considers all the processes from raw materials to machine parameters, recipes, chemical composition, uh, 
social fairness and energy mix um, and uh, quite often uh, some of these aspects get ignored and some get more attention than others and it's uh, to really make an impact we have to actually look uh, at the whole pie and, and, and see what's going on in the industry and, and uh, you know and, and make changes accordingly our original product that we made you know the gold product we made uh, it was difficult at first uh, but uh, we had to we had to modify some of our recipes which you know we and, and systems that we have had for many years and so to to change uh, you know something that we're so used to uh, in a business where quality is so important is extremely difficult uh, but we were quite passionate about making that change uh, for the greater good and so uh, we took the actions that uh, we had to take and now today some of those recipes are our best selling recipes uh, you know in uh, our total product mix and that's very encouraging i'll give you the example of the uh, you know the crystal clear dyeing system you know the clean dyeing system that uh, we had pretty much developed to uh, you know get our products under the c2c umbrella uh, today that is our number one uh, you know uh, dyeing process in terms of uh, uh, when it comes to customer demand. So we're very proud of that. We're very happy about that. And we've, uh, through that system, we've been able to uh, reduce 70% of our water consumption. Um, we have, uh, you know, improved the quality of, of our effluent. Uh, so overall, and uh, we've gotten a lot of traction on it. So it's really been, uh, you know, a, a positive sum uh, exercise for us. And Artistic Millinders recently opened a manufacturing facility in Los Angeles. And as the company scales globally, what steps are you taking to ensure you also scale the company for the future? Yeah, so our, our Los, uh, Los Angeles uh, company, Starfares International, is uh, more than a manufacturing facility. We, we conceptualize uh, it as a futuristic production hub. Uh, grounded in supply chain 4.0 uh, and 360 design principles. Uh, it has uh, added to our speed to market capabilities and, and given us uh, the agility uh, to design at source at a really crucial time, uh, as you know, because of the travel restrictions still in play. And uh, it, it lets us put an incubator for innovation, right, uh, in our customers' backyards. Another thing it does for us is it helps us uh, de-risk supply chains, um, and uh, you know, and and SFI again has really helped in that matter because with such uncertain times, uh, it's um, uh, you know you need to have that sort of flexibility, and and our customers are uh, you know responding quite positively to that. So SFI is designed to be as automated and adaptive when it uh, comes to minimizing our, our carbon footprint as well. So the addition of SFI to the AM ecosystem has uh, you know, given us the springboard to have a cohesive vision and uh, ramp up our local efforts at the same scale. Uh, we are putting up um, a non-denim plant as well, by the way, and uh, which will be catering to sportswear market. And you know, we've got a peace dye plant in the pipeline. And uh, all these ventures share the same ethos. Uh, as our denim and garment company with the focus on circularity and digitization. Uh, this will hopefully help us achieve uh, uh, you know, more products under uh, the gold umbrella and also uh, hopefully will help us achieve uh, the platinum level uh, for a certain assortment. Mm -hmm. So you have set some great uh, ambitions for the future and of course thriving in the future is, is very important. So let's look a little bit ahead. Um, we started the conversation with the most critical sustainability challenges facing the fashion industry now. And thinking forward, uh, what are some of the aspects the industry is getting right? And what also needs to happen next to ensure fashion's future impact is a positive one? Uh, you know, the fashion industry has faced a lot of criticism uh, in, the, in the past. Some of it is, uh, some of it is deserved and some of it, uh, you know, not so much because I think, especially within denim, the, uh, you know, we've been quite conscious about the environment and that realization actually kicked in around a, a decade ago. And, uh, uh, but, you know, it's been there. It's just a matter of how we go about it, how we uh, deduce uh, or extrapolate the, the best solutions. Uh, that's key. And that takes time, right? Because like I alluded to earlier, to, to change, uh, you know, a way of working, a way of manufacturing, which has been in place for over 100 years and has been 
you know, evolving over time and to just drastically change that into a different direction, it's difficult, you know? So it's really been a step-by-step -step process. Um, but I think today we're, we're in a good place. You know, I think we're moving forward. Um, the industry is, is conscious. They've realized what needs to be done, uh, not only from an environmental standpoint, but also from a human standpoint as well. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I think we made strides and we have to also uh, acknowledge the positive uh, because that always gives everyone more energy and impetus to even do better. Well, uh, thank you, Omar, for taking the leadership also in transforming the industry and for your time today for this 5 in 10 interview. Thank you, Christina. Thank you for having me. Yeah.